Have you ever dreamed of having a makeover? A once-in-a-lifetime beauty adventure where a Hollywood makeup artist completely transforms you. In this remarkable Matrix video, we'll show you how to get those same professional results in fast, easy steps you can do at home. You'll be introduced to the makeover secrets of Michael Marin, artistic director of Matrix Cosmetics and one of the world's top celebrity makeup artists. Michael has made over show business stars like Oprah Winfrey, Carol Burnett, and Linda Carter, to name a few. And now, in this step-by-step -step video, he'll show you how to do your own makeover so skillfully, it'll be like having him right in your own home. Who is Michael Marin? He's the best-selling author of two books on makeup and a pioneer of instructional makeup videos. He's also a frequent guest on some of TV's most popular talk shows. Michael is eagerly sought by beauty professionals and top plastic surgeons who want to learn about makeup from an expert. But his real love is helping women just like you find their own beauty potential. Michael believes that every woman has her unique look He's dedicated his career to helping women define who they are. To Michael, beauty is a matter of feeling good about yourself, liking yourself, and doing everything you can to enhance those feelings. In this one-of-a-kind video, Michael shares his secrets for professional-looking makeup. More importantly, he'll help you see that you are already beautiful and how makeup can enhance that beauty. And now, to show you how to do your own makeup quickly, easily, and professionally with Matrix Treatment Cosmetics, here's Michael Marin. Hello, my name is Michael Marin, and I'm the Artistic Director of Matrix Treatment Cosmetics. It's been my privilege to work with some of the most glamorous women in the world. If you think you have nothing in common with them, I'm here to prove you wrong. Every celebrity that I've ever worked with has some concern about her looks. A small mouth, a nose that's a bit too wide, eyes that are too close, yet each has learned how to draw attention to the features that make her uniquely beautiful. And that's what this video is all about. I'll help you find and define your own unique features with Matrix Treatment Cosmetics so that you can always look your best. Makeup doesn't have to be complicated or time consuming. I'll show you how to create professional looking results for day or night using just a few easy steps and Matrix Cosmetics. You'll learn quick and easy techniques to hide blemishes and correct such common problems as sparse brows, a wide nose, and an irregular lip line. You'll also discover makeup secrets such as these. How to blend properly. How to create the perfect brow shape. How and when to use shimmery eyeshadow how to keep your eyeliner from smearing, how to keep your eyeshadows from separating and keep the color true all day, how to transform a daytime look instantly to an evening look without having to start over, and finally, how to realistically shape your face with highlighting and contour shadow. Good makeup is like any creative art. It requires the right tools. So before we begin, let's look at the tools you'll need to apply your makeup. First, you'll need slanted tip tweezers. You'll also need latex wedge sponges, sponge tipped applicators, and cotton swabs. For your eyes, you'll need an eyelash curler, a lash brush or comb, an eyebrow brush, like the one on Matrix Brow Styler Pencil. Finally, you'll need the following makeup brushes, such as these from Matrix. A large powder brush, two blush brushes for contouring, highlighting, and blush application, two eyeshadow brushes, and two lip brushes. Now that we have our tools, we're ready to begin. So let's meet our makeover model, Leanne. I'll be using my simple steps to perfect results to quickly and easily create a daytime makeup. Then I'll show you how to instantly transform your makeup into an evening look. A complete makeup application can be done in just 10 steps. For daytime, you don't need to do every step. I'll use eight steps for Leanne's daytime makeup. As part of the process of dramatization for daytime makeup, for evening, I'll add the other two steps. These are step five, highlighting, and step six, contouring. 
Right now, let's take a minute to look at Leanne's wonderful, unique features. She has a very well-balanced face, which is oval in shape. And she has somewhat of a square jawline. She has beautiful blue eyes, a small aquiline nose, and full lips. Her skin is smooth with a little bit of redness right around the nose and some discoloration under the eyes. Now, even though Leanne has high cheekbones, we can bring them out, especially for an evening look. In the Matrix color discovery system, Leanne would fall into the bright palette. Before you begin any makeup, it's a good idea to always cleanse, tone, and moisturize, which we've just done. That's especially important before you begin tweezing. Now, Leanne has ample space between her brows and her lash line, but what I want to do is remove just a few stray hairs from below the brow to create more of a graceful arch. Okay, it's always a good idea to Keep the skin taut when you're tweezing from below. And you don't want to take too much, but what you want to do is create a very straight, clean line from below. So the eyebrow has more of a straight edge uh, below the hairs. Some people uh, find this a little uncomfortable, and a little ice cube can help prior to using uh, your antiseptic. Always use an antiseptic before tweezing and then a little bit after. And compare the difference before and after. It's also a good idea whenever you're reshaping brows to always step back and take a look at what you're doing along the way because like doing makeup, your perception is different from a distance. The objective is also to create symmetry between both brows. Step one is blemish cover using Smart Stick, a wonderful new product being introduced by Matrix. This cream neutralizer has just the right yellow tone to counteract reddish areas such as blemishes, broken capillaries, or a sunburned nose. I like to use my ring finger and my little finger for these smaller areas and just blend into the skin. The beauty of this product is you can even use it without a foundation at all because it totally negates the red area. It's also great for a daytime look when you don't want to work any foundation at all. A little redness here, a tiny red mark there, and just smooth it into the skin before the foundation. The second step is concealer. For this, I like to use Matrix InstaCover Treatment Concealer. It lightens under eye circles and pigmentation problems and helps diminish lines and shadowy areas. Now, I like to use three dots below and above and cover any discoloration with my concealer. Now what's wonderful about InstaCover, looking upward, is it, that it creates up leads. It creates a terrific base for your eyeshadow, so your eyeshadows stay in place and uh, they won't separate and the color will remain true throughout the day. Now what I like to do with my lipstick brush is fill in the line from the outside of the nose to the outside of the mouth. And then with my finger or my sponge, blend. And that will diminish any lines or wrinkles on the face. Be very, very subtle with this though and make sure you blend. Now some people have a little shadowy area at the outside of their mouth. These are called marionette lines. and a shadow area right below the lip on the chin. Now, if you detect any other discolorations, use your finger or the small lip brush and sort of spot cover with InstaCover. The color I'm using is InstaCover Light. What's great about this product too is it's also treatment for the face. This is especially good for large freckles.
The third step is matrix fluidity or versatility foundation to even out your skin tone. For a sheer dewy finish, apply fluidity treatment makeup with a wedge shaped sponge. For a velvety matte finish, apply versatility wet and dry treatment makeup. For even more coverage, combine the two, applying the fluidity first. I like to use a Q-tip first on key areas of the face, the forehead, cheeks, nose, and chin. Then with my sponge, I go in downward strokes. Now remember, a little goes a long way. It's a wonderful coverage, yet very sheer and light. And see this, what I'm doing right now? This is called stippling, meaning I'm patting it over the concealer. You don't want to wipe off the Insta cover. And everybody has tiny facial hair, so that's why you always want to go in a downward direction. Be sure and get into the hairline without actually touching the hair. This is fluidity number three. And see the difference. It's very important that the foundation matches your skin tone. You never want any obvious lines of demarcation and your skin tone should always shine through. It's important to always go slightly below the jawline However, you don't want to go so low as for any makeup to get onto your clothing. So the objective is, is to create a very even skin tone with your natural skin showing through. Now look how even that looks. The fourth step is face powder using your powder brush. Dust Matrix Hydro Silk Treatment Face Powder all over your face. This will set the foundation and prevent oily shine all day. Again, go in a downward direction. I'll be saving step five and six, highlighting and contouring for Leanne's evening makeup. For the daytime makeup we're doing right now, we'll skip to step seven. The seventh step is velvet treatment blush to bring color to the skin. For this, I like to use the Matrix blush brush. I'm using Earthborn from the Elements of Color collection and uh, this achieves a very natural look for most skin types. And where blush is placed right now is more at the apple of the cheek. That's where you smile, the flesh area. So if you smile, you can see exactly where to put it. Then I like to add a little bit of color to the temples, forehead, bridge of nose, and a little at the chin. Now look at the difference. What's wonderful about these large brushes is you have total control and with the quality bristles, you can achieve flawless blush. You really want to invest in a large blush brush, like the one that comes in the professional brush kit from Matrix. Quality bristles makes a big difference. The small brush that comes with the blush compact is great for touch-ups. The eighth step is brow makeup to define, reshape, balance, or even recreate your brows. You'll be using the Matrix Brow Styler Pencil or Eye Silks Treatment Shadows. Now, where should the brows begin? If you do a straight line from the outside of your nose where the eye begins, that imaginary line should be where your brow begins. And it should end at a diagonal from the outside of the nose to the outside of the eye. So by extending this area, we can actually make the eye seem a little larger. The first thing I'm doing is filling in the brows in any sparse areas. You always want to use short strokes. Here I'm filling in the area of any sparse hairs 
and defining the shape of the brow as it continues outward. And by extending just slightly at the outer point of the brow, we can create a larger eye. I also brushed the brows up before I began, and it's a good idea to brush again to soften what you've done. I'm using the Brow Styler Pencil in Brunette. It's a good idea to brush the brows upward first to find their shape. And now by filling in just the lower part where I see a sparse area and continuing this for a more continuation of the brow, still retaining the beautiful delicate arch, and then also extending the very outer portion. Brushing again for softening. You never want to overdo this. Always use short hair-like strokes. Now if you look to the, the peak of the brow, it should pretty much end after the iris or the color part ends. And try to achieve symmetry between the two brows. The brows are the frame of the eye, and they really can make or break your eye makeup. The ninth step is eye makeup to define, adjust, and balance your eyes. For this step, you'll be using Matrix Eye Silks Treatment Shadows, Eye Enhancer Pencil, and Remarkable Treatment Mascara. I always like to start at the outside working in. I'm using Midnight Gray for a, a nice soft daytime look. Again, use short strokes. I'm going very close to the lash line. And then I love to soften that with my sponge or a brush. And using just a little stippling motion, I'm lining just the outside corner of the eye for a very soft daytime look. Now what I like to do is start with my lining first. The conventional way is normally to use eyeshadows and then line. But this way we can define the eye first and then the shadows themselves can help set your pencil for less mirroring during the day. Also, if you ever make a mistake with your eye lining, it's very easy to take it off before the eyeshadow. Using short strokes just at the outer corner. I don't want to overline the eyes for daytime. I like to use my larger shadow brush first to impart color over the entire eye area using the lightest color and then I work a little darker and you'll find that this is the easiest way to apply eyeshadow. This is called Coming Up Roses. This is called Sun Kissed Raisin, the slightly darker shade and as you can see I'm starting at the outer portion of the eye. The reason you do this is this is normally the darkest area. And a lot of women tend to follow their natural crease line and then they go downward at the outer end. You always want to lift. Another thing I do is I like to blot first on the back of my hand or a Kleenex so you don't deposit too much color. Then take your sponge or brush and soften what you've done.
Here's another trick. To find out where the eyeshadow should end, if you place your cosmetic sponge at the outer corner of the eye, use that as a guideline to where the eyeshadow should end. It also acts as a wonderful barrier to keep any of the powder shadow from falling onto the face. And then blend. Before I do mascara, I always use an eyelash curler. Just be sure you don't pull or tug at the lashes. And what I like to do is press, hold for a few seconds, release, press again a couple of more times so that the, so that the lash takes on a definite curve. I always like to start on the lower lashes, and the first thing I do is blot my wand first, and then I hold it vertically, I think upward please, and just dance it across the lower lashes. I don't like to apply too much. It has beautiful long lashes, and for a daytime look, you want to keep it real clean. I'm using the mascara in Black Diamond. Here's another trick. Use a Kleenex and a disposable mascara wand or a lash comb to brush through the lashes. Then I like to start on the tops of the lashes to make sure that it's coated from both directions. And the reason why I start on the lower lashes first is so that the upper lashes, while they're wet, doesn't stain the brow bone when you look upward to do the lower lashes. Make sure you use the wand horizontally to separate the lashes and coat the hairs from the root. It's important to really darken the lash at the root. What's great about this mascara is it doesn't clump, but you still want to separate. The tenth step is lip makeup to define, adjust, balance, and bring color to the lips. Apply lip makeup using Matrix Lip Definer Pencil and Moisture Active Lip Color. Okay, what I like to do is start at the center of the lip and really define the bow of the lip first. And I'm using the Matrix Pencil in Beyond Nude. The whole idea is to achieve symmetry with the lips and avoid any sharp edges, particularly around the, the bow of the lip. Make sure the lip is well rounded and connected to the outer corner. Then find a center point, the middle of the lip, and connect the two areas, following the natural lip line. It's important to keep the lips together whenever you outline your lips. This way you can see the shape of your mouth. Here's another trick. I like to fill in the entire mouth with the sides of the pencil to act as a stain for the lips before lip color. This way your lip color will stay on longer during the day and any obvious lines of lip pencil won't show once your lipstick starts coming off. This is such a great shade that she could actually go out during the day just like that.
This is called Down to Earth. It's a very natural lip color that will add just a hint of shine to the lips and moisten and condition the lips at the same time. It's important to apply the color with a good brush. And here you see I'm using the Matrix lip brush for more control. And this completes our daytime makeup. Now we've completed Leanne's daytime look. As you can see, we've given her a simple makeup she can do herself in just 10 minutes. Now we're ready to create a dramatic evening look for Leanne. An evening look is not so very different from a day look. It's just more intense. And that we can do with darker colors, brighter shades, bringing out the bone structure, and the introduction of shimmery eyeshadows. I'm now adding versatility, which is a wet and dry foundation, right over her existing fluidity, which was a liquid makeup. And what this is going to do is create more coverage and also create a little bit more of a matte finish for evening. What's so wonderful about a product like this is if you use it dry especially, you can do this a few times during the evening for touch-ups, and it creates a flawless velvety effect. Now I'm going back to the two steps I intentionally omitted from the daytime look, steps five and six. The fifth step is highlighting. Apply highlighter to accentuate your cheekbones or bring areas such as a receding chin forward. To highlight any area, use InstaCover Treatment Concealer or iSilks Treatment Shadow called It's Only Natural. By using It's Only Natural on the ledge of the cheekbone, you can see how this area comes forward. This is virtually about two shades lighter than your foundation. Remember, anything light comes forward. You can also use a lighter concealer here, but since we already set the face with powder, this is why we're using a powder eyeshadow to bring the bones out. You'll notice how I always blot my powders, whether it be a highlighter, a contour, or a blush, or eyeshadow, first. So you never want to over apply. It's just a dusting of the lighter shade to make the area come forward. The sixth step is contouring. To diminish prominent areas, apply contour shadow by using Eye Silks Treatment Shadow in the Wild Mushroom shade. Now, since I used one of the blush brushes for highlighter, I like to use the same brush I used to apply blush for the contour shadow. I'm applying the Wild Mushrooms Eye Silks Treatment Shadow as a contour to create the look of more of a hollow to the cheek and raise that cheekbone even more. Now you never want to overdo this. It's so important to blend this and make sure that it never looks like stripes of brown color. Now remember, for evening makeup, this is under lower light conditions, so you really want to punch up your blush a little bit by adding more color. Sometimes I'll add just a little more blush to the temples, too. Even at the ends of the eyes under the brows. I'm using an eyeshadow now to emphasize the pencil I've already applied. This gives it a real soft look, too. This is knock on wood.
Then I like to go back and always brush up the brows. I'm now adding more eyeliner to really bring out the eyes. Again, using short strokes. Now over that with my small brush, I'm applying Thunderstorm Eye Silks Treatment Shadow to soften that line and set it which prevents it from smearing. I'm going over the lower lid now with the same eyeshadow and thunderstorm. I want to create a very smoky line that's not too hard. Now, if you ever spill any of your eyeshadow onto the face, no problem. Just use a cotton swab and dust it right off. Close. Now I'm adding just a little more of the face powder to the lid to further act as a base for more eyeshadow. And with my smaller brush, I'm using Sunkiss Raisin again, this time a little more saturated to really bring some more drama to the eyes. Now I'm going to add Thunderstorm again in the outer corner of the eye creates more of a dusty, smoky look. Now I'm trying to create symmetry with the other eye by adding more of the sun-kissed raisin, creating more depth to the crease of the eye. Remember to angle upward. And now the addition of thunderstorm, which is a bluish gray. Again, this is at the outer corner of the eye. For even more dimension, I'm adding its only natural as a highlighter under the brow. And I'm using my small eyeshadow brush again. Remember, anything light comes forward, anything dark recedes. Here's the most fun part, adding some nighttime shimmer. I love to use these sponge tip applicators because it applies shimmery shadows so evenly. I just sort of pat it on. And here I'm adding Quicksilver to the center of the lid. And maybe just a little bit on that brow bone for shine. Shimmers can add that dewy glow to the eyes. They can be used by themselves or combined beautifully with matte shadows. But remember that they can exaggerate, so use them sparingly if you have lines or wrinkles. When I get really creative, I'll even add just a little bit of the shimmer to the cheekbone. I'm adding more Black Diamond Mascara now. And don't forget to separate your lash brush.
And now for nighttime, we're going for some more color. This is the definitely red lip pencil. Now I'm filling in the lips over her existing color. Actually, the combination of the two lip colors is the color I really want. It's more or less a muted red. And now I'm adding the Moisture Active Lip Color in Heartbeat. It's important to know that you can create so many different shades by mixing and matching right on your lips. And for an evening look, you don't always have to remove your lipstick. I'm actually going back with my lip definer pencil to create more of a precise line. You may even find you get, have more control once the lipstick is already on. This is a great way to really bring more symmetry to your lips. And now for the final touch. I'm using Hydra Silk Press Powder to get rid of any residual shine and create a flawless finish. Now we've completed all 10 steps. Doesn't she look beautiful? And all we did was intensify her makeup and add highlighting and contouring. Now using these fast and easy techniques, you too can be ready for any special evening in just a few minutes. Now I'd like to show you a few easy hints for correcting common problems. You'll learn how to fill in sparse brows, narrow a wide nose, and adjust the shape of your lips. These techniques are easy to do, and they'll give you professional results. Before we begin, let's meet our model Roz, and look at her unique features. Her face is oval to round, combination of the two with beautiful high cheekbones, her skin texture is good, with some discoloration just under her eyes. She also has a few lines around her mouth, and a few around her eyes, too. Her eyes are well-spaced, with an obvious lid showing. However, her brow bone is prominent. Now, this prominence is similar to a hooded eye, which is characteristic of aging. She's very fair, with virtually non-existent brows and lashes. Her nose is small, but can appear wide at the tip, and her lips are thin. I've already done step one, blemish cover. Now I'm going to show you how to diminish lines, wrinkles, under eye circles, and bags using step two, concealer. Now I'm using Instacover just on the, the dark circles under the eyes, and there's a little bit of discoloration on the lid too. Remember, this also acts as a wonderful base for eyeshadow, particularly when the, when the eyes tend to crease a little on the lid. Close. This will ensure that the eyeshadows uh, don't separate at all. And looking upward. Now it's important if the eyes are puffy, you don't want to put the light area uh, on the bag itself. What I like to do sometimes is come back with my small brush, actually a lip brush, and only lighten the underside of the bag. If you overdo this, you can actually accent the bag and, and draw more attention to it. Now, many people have discoloration at the outer corner of the eye. So I like to come back. Again, you can use your finger or a sponge or have the control of a brush such as this. Oftentimes, the discoloration at the outside corner of the eye can make the eye look down slanting. So you want to be sure and check that and then conceal it with a wonderful product like Instacover. Now, here's another way of using Instacover, and that again is for the 
the line from the outside of the nose to the mouth known as the nasal labial line. And you can see also I'm using my hand as a palette to uh, apply the product. And again, the marionette lines that we talked about before, which are the marionette lines are the lines at the outside corner of the mouth. And always soften what you do with your finger or a sponge. I call this spot checking. I, I like to use a small brush and for any imperfections, freckles, age spots, better known as liver spots, I like to cover them up before my foundation. If you don't have time to do this, it's okay, but for a more flawless finish, sometimes it's better to spot cover rather than use a heavier foundation. The best way to determine a foundation matches your skin, and it should always match, is to check it just at the jawline near the neck. It should look dis barely discernible, and that's a good match. I'm using fluidity number three. Now, fluidity is a, a marvelous foundation. Sure and pat around the concealer and go on a downward movement. Now I'm dusting just a very light coat of Hydrosilk loose powder. Keep in mind that if you have any lines or puffs under the eyes, to avoid too much powder underneath the eyes. Because this is a daytime makeup, I chose not to do step five highlighter, but now I'm going to show you how to use step six contour shadow to narrow Roz's nose. I'm using Wild Mushrooms Eye Silks Shadow to give the illusion of a more defined bridge. Be real subtle with this. Apply this very subtly. You can always build and add more. And you don't want it to look like you have a dirty nose. Be sure and integrate the contouring into the nostril area. You don't want to see where the dark shadow stops. Now, if you have a very wide nose, you can also highlight the center of the bridge. I like to use circular motions when I do blush, particularly when I'm working with a real good blush brush. I get the best results this way. You never really want your blush to go much lower than the bottom of your nose and no closer in than the center of the eye. Do blend it upward, angling towards the top of the ear. And then for that healthy glow, I like to bring the color to the rest of the face, bridge of nose, chin, and at the temples. Be sure and blot your blush on the back of your hand so you don't over apply. Now we're ready for step eight, brow makeup. Now because Roz's brows are virtually non-existent, I wanna show you how to use makeup to recreate brows. I like to use my eyeshadows first as a base for the shape of the brow. Here I'm using the small eyeshadow brush to virtually draw in a stencil of the brow that I want to recreate. For Roz, I'm using wild mushrooms, 
It's a very natural looking brow color for her. But to make the brows look even more natural, I'm now going to go over it with my brow styler pencil. Be sure and sharpen your pencil so you can create hair-like strokes first. This is brunette. Then I like to soften it one more time using the brush on the brass styler pencil. See how natural that looks? Especially when you're recreating brows, it's really important to achieve symmetry between the two brows. Remember to start light and then go darker rather than the other way around. You can always build with makeup. Now, I wanna show you how to use eye makeup, which is step nine, to make your eyes look years younger. I'm lining Roz's eyes in midnight brown. Now, because Roz has a lot of obvious lid showing, we certainly can use eyeliner. Now, to soften this line and smudge it somewhat, I'm using an eyeshadow called Knock on Wood. It's a good idea to line about midpoint, unless your eyes are very well spaced or far set. Don't forget to blend everything you're doing. And using a little bit of the eyeshadow over the line to set it a bit. You really want to avoid eyeliner, sometimes avoid it completely if you have a lot of bags or lines over the eyes. And now I'm using Sandcastle, which is a very peachy bay shade from the lash line to the top of the brow. Again, this will act as a good base for the eyeshadows. Now, this is what's characteristic of a hooded eye. See where this brow bone is very prominent? You want to diminish this prominence and give the illusion of it being raised. So let's start our color higher. So let's start the color higher on the brow bone. And here I'm using brownstone. It's important that these colors be matte. So they diminish the prominence. Remember, anything dark appears to go backward. And then going into the crease, integrating the shade inward. And be sure and go upward at the outer corner. I love using the cosmetic sponge as a guide to show me how to angle my eyeshadow upward. I love using the Matrix Velvet Blushes for eyes. Here I'm using Earthborn, the outer portion of the brow bone. This too can give the illusion of lifting the eye. And here I'm integrating the same color to the outer portion of the eye. Remember that it's very important to use an eyelash curler before mascara, especially when you want to give the illusion to open up the eyes. Here I'm releasing and crimping one more time. Blotting my mascara wand and just going across the lower lashes. The mascara color is black diamond. Now that Roz's lashes are curled, you'll see them come alive when I add mascara. 
and separate between coats. Now let's see the difference between the before and the after of her eyes. See how everything goes upward? It can take years off of a face. Lip makeup is not only the final step in completing your makeup, but also can affect the entire look of your overall makeup, especially when correcting the lip shape. I want to show you how to make lips fuller. Starting on the upper lip, I'm going slightly beyond Roz's natural lip line because I really want to increase the shape, the fullness of her upper lip. I'm using the Terracotta Lip Definer Pencil. One of the most common mistakes women make with their lip liners is applying a shade that doesn't match their lipstick, or in this case, a shade that's too dark. We want the overall lip shade to be light to medium. That's especially important on thinner lips. Now what I'm doing is filling in the entire lip with the pencil to act as a stain. I like to use the side of the point. Now with my lip brush, I'm applying the color Illusion over the lip liner. You see how the color is neither too light or too dark. Anytime you line the lips beyond the natural lip line, it's a good idea to never bring your lip color over that line. Bring it up to it. This prevents the lip color from feathering or bleeding onto the skin. As you can see, taking a few extra minutes for corrective makeup can take years off of your face. You've just seen how corrective makeup made a dramatic difference in our model's appearance. Now let's see how Roz looks with her makeover complete. Doesn't she look sensational? Thank you for sharing this time with me. I hope you've learned lots of techniques for applying your own makeup. Don't worry if you don't get it right the first time. It's only makeup and you can always wash it off. Makeup is fun, so feel free to play with it and find the right look for you. And be sure to visit the beauty professionals at a salon that carries Matrix Essentials Cosmetics. They'll be happy to give you a complimentary color discovery analysis and help in choosing the right colors for you. The makeover secrets I've just shown you are the techniques most professional makeup artists share. Trends may change, but the basic principles of application stay the same. I hope you've enjoyed learning these secrets and that they will help you discover just how beautiful you can be.